going to talk today about iodine. Um, did you know that 95% of the U.S. population is deficient in iodine? It's a huge problem. Um, there's some, I'm sitting here with like a pile of research actually right now. And so where to start even? The U.S. RDA, which I pulled down right here from the government's website, says that for males and females age 14 and older, 150 micrograms a day. That's MCG, not MG like most vitamins that we take. You know, like if you take um, vitamin C, 500 milligrams, it's MG. This is like micrograms, so teeny, teeny measurement, 150. And it suggests to get that, you take, this is a half a teaspoon, and they say to go ahead and get it in your salt. And what you basically need are two of these full a day, which would give you like 190 micrograms a day. That is like a really high amount of sodium. That's 1180 milligrams of sodium a day. Now, sodium's a whole nother topic. I'll probably do another video on sodium, but I try not to go over a thousand milligrams a day of sodium. And you need no lower than 500 milligrams a day of sodium or you'll get low blood pressure and pass that on the floor basically. Your body needs at least, or have a heart attack, you at least need 500 milligrams of sodium a day. So I try to stay around at 750 or a thousand um, when I try to lose weight and really get leaned out because sodium does bloat you I get to about five six hundred but that's really difficult to sustain because all foods basically have sodium in, in them anyway I'm I'm gonna do a whole nother video on that because I could I could talk for an hour on sodium so basically if you compare the sodium to, or excuse me, the iodine intake of a Japanese woman or man, they have between 14 milligrams a day and 42 milligrams a day from a natural food source kelp, which is a much healthier place to get it. Hormone replacement in the U.S. is synthetic for your thyroid, and when you go ahead and take these synthetic hormones, your body then thinks it doesn't need to produce as much anymore out of your thyroid. So as we all know, your thyroid needs iodine to function, so it's related. There's a huge relationship is what I'm trying to say between iodine in your diet, a healthy thyroid, and even sodium. The other major problem is Going back into the 1960s, up till the 60s, they actually used iodine for a huge variety of things. For medicine, in our food supply, they would use iodine in bread and bread products to preserve them, and keep them you know, away from bacteria and everything. And what happened was they decided to discontinue that in the 60s and they went to using bromine, which was a toxic poison they used to use in the trenches for World War II to kill soldiers. So it's not healthy. But what happened was they started putting the iodine in the salt and it's not enough iodine. So basically 95% of the U.S. population is not getting enough iodine. So symptoms of lack of iodine or your thyroid which needs the iodine to function. See the th the thyroid secretes two hormones that the body needs to control how quick the body burns calories and use energy. It's also important for your immune function. And so symptoms of not having enough are your chronic fatigue, weight gain, muscle weakness, you're sick a lot, you feel cold, and hypothyroidism affects 90% of our women who suffer from hypothyroidism. Uh, one in eight women will get a thyroid problem 
and less than 25% get diagnosed. So also it's related to cancer as well, like breast cancer, because the iodine and your the iodine in the thyroid basically also helps your breast tissue not get cysts. Iodine helps break up cysts, both in your breasts and actually in your ovaries. And so if you're constantly deficient in iodine, it's a lot harder for your body to break them up. It's like Dawn basically for grease on your dishes. Iodine is to your cysts and other fibroids basically in your ovaries and also blood type O's are particularly tend to be um, susceptible to low levels of the thyroid hormone so basically I'm trying to explain like your thyroid needs the iodine to go ahead and produce the hormones that your body needs and keep your body healthy your immune system healthy and It'll make you feel, you know, alert. You won't have that brain fog. You'll feel vibrant. And without it, you're going to tend to have more mental fogginess and just be sick a lot. You know, have possible fibroids and breast issues with the cysts in your breasts. And, or, you know what I'm trying to say. So, anyway. There's a way that you can tell if your body is iodine deficient and that is if you go ahead and take a little they're at the drugstore or Rite Aid they'll have a little iodine tincture that's poisonous though and you can actually paint that it's that orange color and you go ahead and paint it on the bottom of your foot like the size of a silver dollar and if your body just absorbs it really quickly then your body is deficient in iodine and if it doesn't and it stays on there a few days then your body's fine Another way to tell is when you wake up in the morning and take your temperature without moving around very much. And if your body temperature is a little low at 97.6, I believe is what they said, just that slightly lower body temperature means that you're deficient in iodine. So really, everybody is deficient in iodine. I mean, there's really not too many people that aren't. And everyone, I think, could benefit from taking iodine. So I just wanted to say, you know, first of all, I'm not getting paid or anything like that to endorse a product. And so hopefully that means I can't get in trouble either for talking about iodine. There was a doctor that made these pills and he had all these blogs on iodine and also just all the health benefits to it besides even just your thyroid you know for the immune system to help all kinds of like diseases cancer sickness and I noticed all his blogs are gone right now um, the doctor is completely off of the internet so I wondered if he got in trouble for talking about iodine because maybe the drug companies that produce synthetic drugs get mad but I have not nothing to do with any of it I'm not a doctor so I can't get sued and I'm not selling these, so I'm not endorsing a product. But basically, these are from Let's Talk Health Iodine. And these have organic iodine from kelp and potassium iodine, 30 milligrams. And they also come along with L-tyrosine, 400 milligrams. So... This organic iodine from kelp, it says it's like 20,000% of the US RDA, <laughs> like a huge amount. So I've been taking these iodine pills. I take two, so that's the 30 milligrams. And I figure if a Japanese woman eats 42 milligrams every single day from all the seaweed and kelp, or the men do, because it also helps with their prostate issues, um, I take these like maybe three or four times a week. I'll go ahead and take two pills, the 30 milligrams. I, if I'm really sick and run down, you know, sometimes I'll take two pills every day, the 30 milligrams, because I figure it's still less than 42 milligrams that a Japanese person might eat. And they have much lower rates of breast cancer too. Here in the US, it's one in eight women will get breast cancer. The Japanese women, it's 1 in 20. Back in the 1960s, here in the U.S., it used to be 1 in 20. So after they discontinued using iodine in bread, 
is when the cancer rates for women jumped up in the breast cancer because the, the higher levels of the iodine assist with breaking up any kind of um, cysts or lumps or fibroids in the breast. So anyway, it's it's really, really extremely important. And also I wanted to mention too, if you try the iodine test on the bottom of your foot, um, obviously it's poisonous. You can't eat it in that form. And your body will only absorb it if it needs it. If your body does not need it, it will just ignore it on your skin. So it only takes what it needs. So that's a good way, especially if you're scared of taking iodine or ov overdosing in iodine or you know, your body will only absorb it if it needs it. So that, that works really good. And what else was I going to say? Um, I have so many notes. See, food sources of iodine, table salt, seaweed, cod, sea bass, haddock, and perch are good sources. Kelp is the most common vegetable seafood that is a rich source of iodine. Dairy products also contain iodine. Other good sources are plants grown in iodine-rich soil, which most soil is very depleted. And so one of the things I wanted to say too, the other issue with the iodine is we have a huge problem with two chemicals that are constantly interfering with knocking what little iodine we do eat, the teeny little amount and the sodium, these two chemicals basically knock it out. Like a musical, like musical chairs where one gets knocked out and the person falls on the ground. That's what happens. And that is fluoride. And the other one is chlorine. And so basically, um, fluoride and chlorine are in the same family as iodine basically but when they are present they replace the iodine they knock it out so it goes out of your body so you barely get any and then what little you do have is susceptible to getting knocked out by the chlorine and the fluoride and obviously fluorides in your toothpaste which is a very toxic chemical really nobody should be using it doesn't help your bones that was never proven and also chlorine is in your water it's in your shower water when you take a shower it does absorb in your skin and so it really makes sense that you may want to go ahead and take some iodine and supplement your diet with that it's really going to help your immune system um, burning fat healthy hair and nails you know dry brittle hair and nails is a symptom also of iodine deficiency so I actually think it's going to help keep you younger if you take a little, you know, a little extra iodine. And I'm going to go ahead and put the link below too if you want to order these pills. There's all kinds of other pills. I find that these are the best because they come from natural kelp and they have the L-tyrosine with it, which the two need to be absorbed together. If you take it by itself, it might not get absorbed. And also... Um, I'm probably going to do another video about it and probably one on just fluoride and just chlorine because they are, they're just so bad for you and they're everywhere and people think that they're okay for some reason and they're not. So anyway, um, I think most people could benefit from taking some iodine. So if you need it, I just wanted to put that information out there and I'll put the links below and I'll also go ahead and put the books that I researched for this product, project, excuse me, product. Um, it's this book here, Surviving the Toxic World. Um, it's all about like every place, look at how thick it is. It's just like everything that can go wrong that makes your body age, be full of chemicals, be not very healthy. And then of course, this book right here, this uh, nutritional healing book which I've read. I've read both these books cover to cover many times and researched them. And then Eat Right for Your Type. Um, it talks about like your blood type O and that, you know, it has thyroid issues. And then of course the U.S. government website is where I got the rest of this information and also from the, you know, Japanese. You know, they did also a research study on Japanese. So anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any comments or any questions,
of things you'd like me to talk about, just let me know. Put in the comments below. So thanks for watching.